All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we get to talk about Goss Prime, who just came out. And as you can see, I have spent a bit of time with him, and we have some new builds to talk about for him because he's an extremely versatile Warframe that honestly has a ton of options, but his build doesn't change very much depending on which of those options you go for. Uh, so for that, just to jump right in, uh, this is the build that we are currently on. It is pretty usual for Goss. Uh, I have opted to go Sprint Boost and Rush just because it's fun on him. Uh, there are plenty of other things that you could throw up here. Uh, just like, you know, more stats with one of the Drift mods. Uh, he doesn't really need Prime Sure Footed. So, for me, just being faster is more fun for Goss. Uh, but you could definitely, like, go into power stats here if you really wanted to. Though I also don't really feel like he needs it or gets much out of uh, putting anything except for Sprint Speed here. A sprint Boost, very similarly. Uh, with the build that I have him on, uh, like, Kuro's Projection is completely useless. Uh, but you could opt to put something like uh, Energy Siphon here, and if you don't care about the extra Sprint, uh, sprint Boost, uh, that's going to be better. That being said, uh, this build looks very, very similar to our previous build. We're basically running, and by basically running, I mean we are running every single duration mod in the game. We are running Prime Continuity, 55%. Running Narrow Minded, 99%. We're running Constitution for 28%. Augur Message for 24, and even Nyra's Hatred for 15% ability duration and 35% health. Of note, uh, you do not need to run all of the duration in the game, and there is a lot of room here. That a lot of room here is Nyra's Hatred and Augur Message. You are still going to have a very, very functional and very, very good Goss build if you do not have either of these mods, because between Constitution, Continuity, and Narrow Minded, you will already have tons and tons of duration. That being said... Uh, I have not chosen to go for a build that specs into something that needs different mods here, so the duration is just going to always be good for him. Uh, and the little bit of health can help in situations where you run into stuff like Toxin, for example, which we're going to talk more about in a second. Of note on here, you'll notice that I have Umbral Intensify, and that puts us to 144% strength, but that is exclusively for our Subsume, which is Roar. So Roar is on here for 43%. Uh, additional damage from all sources, which just is an excellent damage buff. Uh, this buff is also the exact same duration as both our red line and our kinetic plating buffs, so it's also very con uh, very consistent uh, and nice to just fit into our rotation of when our buffs go down, we hit red line and then get the extra casting speed for both the roar re-up and also the kinetic plating re-up, and then we mostly just focus for, you know, more than a minute and a half on using mock rush to get around and just kill guys. It is worth noting that I am going to show a Thermal Sunder build you can use for map clear, um, but I generally don't think that that's like, you know, the best thing to be doing on Goss. It can technically scale into Steel Path, uh, but I think you're better off with weapons, depending on, of course, what you have access to. Uh, in addition to that, for our energy economy, we are just running Energy Nexus. This gives us plus three energy regen per second. Uh, we are not running any channeled abilities. And if we look at the total amount of energy we are spending every minute and a half, besides, of course, our mock rush, it is 175 and then 50, which is only 225. Uh, and in 93, uh, 96 seconds, we generate more energy than that every single time. So even if we are doing nothing else at all, uh, we will always have enough energy to permanently re-up all three of our buffs. Uh, with leftover to, of course, mock rush around. And that is without considering that R2 is going to be generating energy for us. Uh, I really don't feel the need to even have flow on this build. I have had zero energy problems whatsoever. Uh, and then looking into Arcanes, uh, I'm running Molt Efficiency. This is, of course, just for duration. It's the rest of the duration in the game that we are allowed to run. Uh, and because our shields are usually going to be active because R2 makes us immune entirely to most damage types, usually we are also going to be getting that additional duration. Uh, and then you see I am running Molt Augmented. So Molt Augmented, once it is stacked up, it does put us over 200% strength, uh, and that is really good for a variety of helmets, depending on what you want to run. So there's lots of options there. Uh, this could be used to run, if, for example, if you feel like you need a single target uh, armor strip, uh, you can run Stein Axes Subsume, and then once Molt Augmented is built up, you have just a pure, complete defense strip that'll work on pretty much any target in the game, including stuff like Angels. 
Uh, and it'll also be, of course, a decent strip at a base level if you just need to cast it twice. And with our very good energy economy, that's also never a problem. So it gives you the option to go through a, a few different subsumes by getting to the 200% strength. But also, it's just really nice uh, for Roar to get like up to 60% uh, from the 43 that it's at. That additional 17% damage uh, is really, really huge, especially depending on what builds you're going into for the weapons that you're going to be using on this. Notably... You do not need Molt Efficiency or Molt Augmented. I personally think that these are pretty easy to access, both coming from the Zaramon content, uh, which I think is quite easy to farm, uh, but you don't need either of these. These could just be empty slots, or you could replace them with whatever you want to use. Uh, if you, like, for example, were using a bunch of secondary weapons, you could just use Arcane Precision. Uh, if you're primarily DPSing with that, and it just gives you 300% damage, uh, you could use uh, more fun things like Pistolier, which is just infinite ammo, which of course goes very well with Goss having a huge increase to fire rate uh, from his 4 buff. So there's options like that, it's things like Velocity for of course more fire rate as well. Tons and tons of options that are all very good here. Obviously you can go things like Strike for even more attack speed, Fury if you need more melee damage, if you're going a melee build. The options are endless. There's tons and tons of things that Goss can utilize here. He just has whatever you want to do because he doesn't need Energize and he really doesn't need Augmented or Molt Efficiency. They're just what I think are the best picks for those slots uh, and they're also pretty easy to get. So just good easy stuff all around. You'll also notice that this build is very cheap at only two Forma and we absolutely do not need to have a max level adaptation. If you have like a rank eight narrow minded, that's going to be more than fine. And even just regular continuity is not going to harm this build very much. Iris Hatred can be a little hard to get, but it's also only 15% of our ability duration. And if you're having trouble early game with your energy economy, you could of course just swap this out for like Streamline and be totally fine. Uh, speaking of Streamline, if you do not have Energy Nexus, it is a pretty good you know substitute here. Just slap in Streamline, which you are going to have. Uh, and that's going to be a serviceable, you know, slot in. But I do believe that Energy Nexus is overall better just because it is so, so consistent as we never need to pick up orbs to continue casting our abilities. Um, for that, it's just doing Goss stuff. We have huge buffs. We get 241% fire rate, 128% attack speed, 161 reload speed, and 161 uh, casting speed. Not to mention the little bit of area damage that we get, which at low levels will just kill everybody, if I'm quite honest. Uh, and then, of course, just the raw invincibility of kinetic plating, uh, just 100% damage reduction to all physical, heat, cold, and blast damage, which covers the vast majority of what you're going to be encountering. You will, of course, sometimes run into toxin damage, which can be a problem for Goss, but usually uh, any damage that you're going to run into that is going to get through this defense uh, is going to be pretty well telegraphed, uh, with the exception of sometimes with toxins, specifically against certain infested enemies. Uh, and then other than that, we're just going to be mock rushing around, which is what I feel like people want to do with Goss anyway. Um, and it is very good. To quickly show, this is the Thermal Sunder focused build. So if you just want to DPS with Thermal Sunder, especially if you are only on regular path for now, um, if you are doing regular path and you're just like farming materials, farming items, getting new Warframes, and you just want to use Goss as just like the driver to go through and do all these farms and get all these things, this build is, generally speaking, going to be much, 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 much better for you uh, because you're just really optimized into Thermal Sunder. Uh, this is a 31 meter AoE that lasts 10 seconds that usually in regular path, you cast it and everything that exists no longer exists. Of course, this build is using Molt Augmented once again to bump us up to 200% strength just to power Thermal Sunder up more, even though that's really not necessary. Uh, we're using Arcan Energize to make sure we never run out of energy, uh, but of course you can do other combinations of like putting Fleeting Expertise in here uh, instead of Prime Flow, and then you're usually not going to have energy problems. And if you really are having energy problems, you could, if you don't have Archon Vitality, for example, um, throw like Energy Nexus if you do have that in here instead, uh, and just, you know, move some things around and get some stuff done and just, you know, kill all the enemies very easily with Thermal Sunder. Uh, as Goss has the unnerfed version of that, and it does reasonably scale into Steel Path if you don't really have any weapons for it, uh, because whenever you are in Redline, if you use Thermal Sunder in both modes, uh, that will armor strip the enemies, which is usually quite good for killing them, though I find that build to be a bit dangerous uh, for running through Steel Path. Notably, uh, I do suggest on Goss inverting your tap hold if you've never done that before, uh, just to show real quickly in the options, we have the invert tap hold abilities. And you can see here on Goss, I have that inverted. 
Uh, this makes it so that whenever you tap the ability, it's the fire version of the ability instead of the cold version ability, which is very nice for quick casting it because the fire version is almost always the version you want to cast uh, for a variety of different reasons. The main one being that it does more damage and you usually don't need to cast the cold version. Um, but I would highly suggest doing that for Goss so that it is easier to a DPS with that ability, especially if you're going to be leveling him. If you are leveling him, definitely, you know, kind of investing specifically into Thermal Sunder uh, for that level up is going to be a much faster way to get him leveled as he will get all the kills and get all the experience, of course. Um, so that is also suggested. In general, though, this is a weapons platform Warframe, and for that, we are enhancing that with green shards. So, uh... This is really good for basically any weapons platform Warframe, which is going to be another Warframe we're going to talk about in the future here. Uh, but for Goss, getting two green shards to increase the max stacks of corrosion by two each. This makes it so that the weapons that you are using totally strip armor uh, on the vast majority of enemies in the game. Uh, that, alongside with Goss's very good buffs for whatever weapon you happen to be holding, means that you can just pretty much shred through anything with super high fire rate. Uh, which basically makes any weapon have good status, which will allow you to strip the armor off anything you happen to be shooting, and is just insane on Steel Path. Worth noting, these shards, you will basically not notice anything at all outside of Steel Path. Uh, if you are using strong weapons, these are just going to be negligible on regular path. You will, will, will not notice their effects because your strong weapons will just kill the regular path anyway. But if you are still working through things, if you can get a hold... Uh, of some corrosive shards they can really make a big difference in terms of just running regular content uh, and then the only other shard that i have equipped currently is casting speed i think that this, this is one i was experimenting with just to cast red line faster which then lets me cast the others faster i don't really think that this shard is necessary uh, and in general i think what is probably optimal on goss is legitimately just three duration shards here just three as good as you can get them duration shards depending of course on how much you want to invest in goss Tows are of course always going to be better for that but reminder, there's no reason to make green Tau shards because going above these four stacks is never really going to have any effect. Um, so yeah, you could add some more duration there. Uh, if you go really crazy with it and you don't care about the green shards, you could, of course, do a full Tau setup uh, and get yourself over 400% duration most of the time. But that is significantly overkill. And at some point, you're going to be better off investing into strength um, for buffs like Roar or perhaps Nourish. Nourish also being a very good option instead of Roar, especially if your energy economy is a bit questionable, or if you need to add viral damage for certain pieces of content, uh, like if you're going to be doing very long runs of Steel Path Cascade, for example, you would definitely want viral, uh, instead of the Roar buff, even though Roar is gonna generally be more damage, sometimes viral is just what you need. And in terms of weapons, let's talk about some good ones. So, of course, we have things like the Torrid and the Furious Incarnan, which are just stellar. Also, just to note, this is the new Furious build that doesn't use Encumber. The Encumber build is better. We'll go into why I use this build later, but the TLDR is that it's very good because it is corrosive heat, uh, and that'll be more important in a future video, but just to talk about why the Furious is on a different build. And then the Torrid is like just your usual stuff, although swapped to corrosive as well, because we are using corrosive shards. Uh, and that's going to make it so that this is just a beam that can cut through the map, strip all the armor off all the enemies, and kill everybody. And finally, we have a weapon that probably deserves its own video, but is going to be shown here because it's very good with Goss and kind of turns Goss into just an unstoppable Beyblade. Uh, and that is the Cost Assist. This recently got, uh, got a lot of tools, and it uses basically every single new tool that we got in Whispers in the Walls, and it is also quite a cheap build to put together for how effective it is. So, this wants us to have two green shards, but does not require it. It is insanely better with it, um, but does not require it, and this is the build. So, this is a two-form of build, pretty low, and this is a build that notably does not need the primed versions of Primed Reach or Primed Pressure Point. Of course, they will be better. Um, and in addition to even that, if you do not have Voltaic Strike, which is the other rare mod in this build, maybe Condition Overloaded, which is also not needed if I'm honest, especially for lower level stuff. Um, if you don't have Voltaic Strike, you could, uh, instead of, you know, if you don't have Voltaic Strike, you probably don't have these leveled either. Uh, you can just swap this out for just a regular electric mod, and it's going to work just fine. So, what does this build do? The answer is everything. 
Uh, so the cost assist is in a very special position where it is a corrosive base damage weapon, which means whenever we build viral with Scourge and Frost, uh, we and then we also add electric to it, we can get corrosive, viral, and electricity all together. Electricity allows us to proc melee influence, which you've probably seen in the past. If you did not see my most recent Zorus video, I would highly suggest checking it out. Uh, to get more information on just exactly how good and why melee influence is so powerful. But this allows melee influence to be used on this weapon while also utilizing both corrosive and viral damage. Corrosive to take all the armor off all of the enemies, viral to make them much more vulnerable to damage, and then the spreading electricity procs to kill everybody. Uh, this is supremely good, and I have had incredibly high kill rates with it. And it doesn't stop there for what the cost assist offers, because the cost assist is a scythe. That means that the heavy attack for the scythe does 600% damage and always procs splash. So this weapon, in addition to being a cheap build that is going to spread giant amounts of AOE damage that strips all armor and kills all the enemies, it also will be at 12x combo usually and with a Tenokai mod like Opportunities Reach or whatever you happen to prefer, uh, whenever you do a heavy attack, you are going to hit enemies for half a million proc slash damage, um, which means that they're going to be taking damage that goes through all armor, uh, direct to them and enemies don't like that uh, most things just really don't appreciate it uh, and you can really just kind of have the best of all worlds with a weapon that can force slash and do big damage with heavies uh, and also just aoe clear so we are going to be showing this off uh, pretty well today but you know boss can make pretty much anything work he's very good uh, with melee because that does of course build up his kinetic plating and just his meter in general for redline uh, and doesn't like cost him anything while he's like just you know ADSing down a hall. Um, but things like the Torrid, the Furious, uh, the classically stuff like the Trumna, and just you know generally weapons with big magazines, maybe even stuff like the Super Vandal, are all very very good for him. But yeah, uh, to uh, to show off just real quickly, we're gonna grab these, uh, not those guys. That was a different test. We're gonna grab our usual uh, twenty corrupted heavy gunners uh, that are enemy level two hundred. Hop on our red line. Hop on Roar and R2 extremely quickly. Uh, we could just like run up in here and just do show. Just hit these guys real quick. You can see just how effective this is. Uh, with this stance, we just turn into a Beyblade Whirlwind of Death, and it is incredibly, incredibly effective. Uh, to show some gun stuff, we have the Torrid, of course. Uh, spawn some enemies in here. Transform the gun. Extremely high fire rate, of course. R2 went down for some reason. And these enemies just can't handle it, of course. Weapons like the Torrid, extremely good, especially with the corrosion, corrosion shards and the increased fire rate. Uh, and then, of course, just, you know, showing the stuff that the Furious does as well. Charge it up real quickly with the super high fire rate and just blow them all away. Just an incredibly powerful weapons platform Warframe that just really doesn't care about it. Of note, for the Prime Access, uh, there I am wearing all of, like, the Prime Access armors here. Uh, just real quickly, I'm using the Zephyr Harrier animations for anyone who's wondering. Uh, to really quickly talk about these accessories, uh, I really like the Sindana. I think it looks excellent. Uh, the armor set, I think, looks on him very good. And this is also the helmet that is also exclusive to the Prime accessories. Uh, and it is very nice. Thing that I will note is a thing that you probably just noticed, which is whenever I aim down sight, I can't see shit. Um, I, it is really unfortunate. <laughs> that this is the case because I think that this shoulder piece looks really good uh, but it very much blocks your view on every single weapon I've used so if you're not going to play him mostly melee uh, you're probably gonna have to pop the right shoulder off of him uh, if you uh, you know want to be able to see anything which is a bit unfortunate uh, that that's how that sits but that is a warning for anyone who's gonna be buying the PA that wants to use Goss as a weapons platform for the most part uh, if you were just going to be shooting a bunch of guns and ADSing all the time, uh, this armor is probably not the armor set for you. You're probably going to have to go bare-shouldered for that one uh, for it to be more convenient. But yeah, anyway, that's what's up with Goss. He's extremely, extremely powerful. He has, you know, of course, the ability to use pretty much any gun that is at least decent to extreme effectiveness. And whenever you give him very powerful weapons, like I've shown off here, he makes short work of pretty much anything that you can toss him at. Uh, other thing that is worth noting, uh, companion-wise, I'm using Death Cube, who's going to provide some energy. Uh, companion-wise, you could really go any direction you feel like. Uh, he could be, you know, bringing the Hound if you wanted to, like, disarm enemies. 
Nautilus if you wanted to group enemies up. If you're having ammo problems, Carrier is an option. You could bring a Smedicavat for more drops. You could bring uh, an Adarza for better crits. Tons and tons of things you can do. Taxon for shield gating if you feel like the survivability is needed. Spreading status with Diriga, getting free casts with Diriga as well. Worm for status immunity things. Shade for invisibility if you feel like you need that. He really is not tied down to just one companion, Helios, if you need to scan things. Uh, so you can really just kind of go with whatever you prefer in terms of that, uh, as he is uh, kind of open to whatever. Uh, the one thing that I would generally suggest is that if you just will need to charge up randomly, like if you get uh, Magnetic Proct or something like that and get all a bunch of your energy drained, uh, Zenerik is nice to have around. I usually use it at the beginning of missions. Uh, but also, I don't think you're going to like be in hot water if you just bring Matarai for the extra damage. Uh, or, of course, go for like Naramon if you're on a very, very melee-focused build and just want the combo around. But yeah, that's what's up with Goss. Uh, he's excellent. I really like how his Prime looks. His Prime trailer was excellent. Let's get into Seal Path and absolutely ruin some dudes. All right, on Tav, as is usual, we're just going to pop this up here while I grab the music. As I totally forgot to do such a thing. Here we go. Editing design. You're welcome. You don't have to add this in post anymore. The dream. All right. Like I said, I usually just like pop center at the beginning of missions. Usually it's also not necessary, but you can see the huge amount of energy region whenever you do Zenerik plus uh, on here. And usually we just let, you know, let the enemies spawn in, pop red line. Uh, and then quickly pop Roar, pop R2, and then just get to work. You'll be able to very quickly see the cost assist uh, do its dirty deeds here. Uh, it's worth noting this will work with like pretty much any weapon that is like capable of this. Using this with like Nikanas, um, or like you know just a any weapon that can even kind of do this. Using this with the Ickers is like uh, a thing that is also valid. Although I might suggest switching to gas damage. Uh, if you are going to use the Ickers from my recent Saren video. Um, but yeah, the cost assist is just in a special position where it can have all of the damage types that you want. Uh, and it doesn't have to compromise on anything. And it is on the very short list of weapons that can do that whenever you're not using exactly Saren. Uh, so it, much like the Zorus, which you could also be using here. Although the Zorus doesn't have many benefits for particularly Goss. Um just is really beneficial with influence and can give you a lot of AoE you might not otherwise have, uh, especially for a Warframe like Goss, who is, you know, in many cases, you're wanting to just drop down uh, off of Thermal Sunder and focus more on your weapons. I feel like a lot of people like to play Goss that way, which is why I decided to show him off this way. Obviously, I, I could show the build that's like just, you know, use the Thermal Sunder, you know, if you find a spot on the map and cast Thermal Sunder a bunch and make Heat Stack a whole ton uh, with super high energy efficiency and then, you know, kill Steel Path that way by just armor stripping them and putting Heat on them. Totally doable to play him that way as well. It is not a bad way to play him. It's, in fact, very good. Um, but I feel like most most Goss players, I think, are going to be more focused on instead of staying in one place, like dashing around, going like enemy to enemy uh, and, you know, fighting dudes in melee, using your red line, just, you know, going crazy and just, like, doing whatever you want to do, sp speeding through missions, you know, just, like, the kind of, the vibe of Goss, I think, for most people, is that you, you want to be doing stuff and, like, you know, you know moving around and killing a bunch of guys and do doing what you do, uh, as opposed to the, the hangout in one place kind of play style. And Goss is, like, you know, him having those, like, multiple different builds really is just, like, big on like the versatility for like what he can do having a warframe that it can both just like you know pivot into an aoe farming style especially for low levels being very effective and also being like oh hey i can just be a weapons platform warframe that can do whatever i need to do that's also basically invincible in most cases Turn turns out is good like <laughs> whenever like your baseline is oh i'm super fast and basically invincible you know, whatever you can tag on to that is going to be pretty solid. Like, you're going to have really no problems in pretty much any content. And you can see I'm certainly not having any problems here doing my, my spin to win style here with the cost assist. Uh, this is the stalking fan um, stance. I do think that this is the best stance uh, for the cost assist, especially just considering its motions and the uh, values that you get out of them. Um, but yeah, here, let's pop over to the tour now just to show some... Some of that, which is just going to be also hilarious, of course. 
Uh, especially considering that we have like roar on that is just completely unnecessary. Uh, of course, uh, because you do have such insane fire rate, uh, it is usually advised to be a little less trigger happy because you can really dump magazines as Goss with this much fire rate. It is absolutely absurd, which does of course mean that you can dump just obscene amounts of damage into enemies, uh, but it also means that you can run out of ammo. Usually on Incarnans, that's not going to be a big deal because, of course, the Incarnans have incredible ammo economies. Um, but it can still happen, especially on some of the less efficient Incarnans, uh, such as the Furious, actually. If you fire the Furious a little too much and get a little too reckless with it, you will sometimes run out of ammo. Uh, but, of course, that's, like I said before, you you know throw Carrier on there and Carrier will gonna pretty much solve all your ammo concerns uh, pretty permanently. You just like super fast charge up because our fire rate is insane. Our reload is insane. Uh, other weapons that are really good with him. Uh, if you want to use the Grimoire, which just recently came out, that weapon has unlimited ammo. So just stack as much fire rate as you want uh, and just go to the moon with it. You can also use the duration increasing um, special mods on the Grimoire. Uh, those are funny and will get you well over 400% duration if you just want to see obscenely high duration amounts uh, and really obscene buffs. Uh, also, because if you are planning on using that on Goss, uh, because it is a duration buff, you can get that duration buff and then turn that duration buff into a fire rate buff for the Grimoire. So it kind of means that the duration buffing mod on the Grimoire is also a damage buff for it because it's going to increase its fire rate even considerably more. But those are all just... You know, a bunch of different considerations. He like Goss is such like an open platform Warframe that can really be made to do pretty much whatever you want, honestly. And you can see like, you know, you can just kind of root around and talk about all of, like the the potential that he has, uh, and it's really not a big deal. Uh, in terms of kill rate, obviously I've been like bouncing between weapons just to like show that he can kind of do it all. But we're at like a 6:30 kill rate, and that is with me kind of goofing around. Uh, so it's very, very strong. Obviously, a lot of that is because, hey, I'm using good weapons. Uh, the worse the weapons are that you use, of course, the worse the, like, rate is going to be. But he's responsible for a good amount of, uh, you know, buffing these weapons up and making them stronger. Uh, so, you know, it's it's not all just, hey, I brought good weapons to this mission. Uh, it turns out there's, there's a little more to it than that. We have the Acolyte here. Oh, I just waste. I just wasted all of my combo, but we can just like cost this him down. There you go. He's dead now. Screwed up and wasted all of my like 12x combo that I had built up because I didn't have a Tenokai charge ready. But that's not a huge deal. You can see just immediately shredding through here. Goss in no danger from at least that acolyte. Of course, the acolyte that's of course always going to give everybody trouble is going to be violence, turning off all of your abilities, uh, which he will turn off all of your abilities as Goss. Uh, your your uh, four and your roar and your two, which is the danger. But besides that, the acolytes are really not going to be trouble. Uh, they'll go down pretty quickly and can't really do much about you. You kind of just get to walk all over them and move on. Like if, there's, if there's any warframe that's like you know really making a mockery of the enemies in general, that's going to be Goss because it's very infrequently that you get a warframe where they just get blanket complete immunity to a bunch of stuff. Uh, that is relatively rare still. The only other Warframe that is usually able to also boast that is Valkyr. And of course, she comes with a million downsides that Goss does not have. Uh, also, ooh, I, there was one subsume that I forgot to mention that is an option. Uh, very thematically appropriate and does have some good benefits. Uh, if you take Neja's Firewalker, um, you can use that. And you will get a nice fire trail that makes you immune to all statuses. Uh, and also will crowd control enemies behind you. But most importantly, whenever you dash around like this, you'll leave like a trail of fire behind you. Which, you know, just thematically really fits for what Goss is up to. Uh, so if you're big on like the, the theming and just like you want, you know, like the trailblazer um, for Goss, that is definitely an option to go for. That still also just, of course, is good for him. It just absolutely shredding through here. We're at we're at 899 kills. Uh, we're not even at eight minutes. Well, we're, we're right about at eight minutes. So we're like a nice hundred over what like the usual comfiness is um, for like the kill rates that I'd like to have in this mission. And you know, any anytime you're over the like 100 kpm that I like to see from Warframes on this mission, uh, it's you know 
it's good. It's a great time. You can really, you know, take things pretty casually. Um, and Goss can go really late in some content because, you know, like I said, 100% immunity to some things. If, if you can count on the enemies only having that, you can see that like about half a million slash procs there on that guy. Uh, and that was, you know, not even with Fantastic Combo. <laughs> uh, you can you can see that stuff going. And also very fast, of course, combo buildup on Goss. Very often you don't even really need combo duration on Goss. Uh, because you will quite simply just be able to um, just hit them fast enough to not even need it. Because you'll just, you'll just charge right back up. Even if you waste your 12x combo seconds away from being back to full. We got another one. Knowing my luck, this one is going to be violence. Oh, we got Malice. Malice, uh, worth noting. So you're not immune to your own damage types. Uh, if you are not using, like, melee whenever Malice shows up and you are shooting a gun, uh, you can kill yourself on his bubble. So that is worth noting. You probably would like to avoid doing that. Uh, and then you can just see, like, the slash proc there just, like, chunking through Malice very easily. And just, you know, eliminating him post-haste. Of course, you're not getting, like, the in insane super upfront damage of a critical hit. Um, but it's more than plenty to make, make short work of them. And, like I said, you're not threatened by any of them except for violence, really. Uh, as long as you're paying sort of attention uh, whenever they do show up. Okay, yeah, we're just about at 10 minutes here. Uh, we're at 1,100, like, KPM already before we're even at the 10 minutes. Uh, probably if I went a little bit harder with it, I probably could have pretty easily gotten to a 1,200 KPM. Uh, but of course, you know, some of that is always attributed uh, to the weapons. Yeah, and then we can just bounce on out of here. Of course, just speeding through the tile sets. And just zooming around. But yeah, Goss Prime, super fun. Still, hey, guess what? Goss was a really good Warframe, and his Prime is still a really good Warframe. He has some minorly improved stats. He looks great. And he's still super powerful, and everybody loves Goss. Is there, like, is there much else to be said? I don't personally think so. But yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video, uh, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. And, of course, as usual, thanks very much to the patrons for supporting the channel, uh, especially the $10 patrons, Alex Barnum, Andrew, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Benuvin, uh, Blotomatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Cano Lathra, uh, Dylan Dworski, Thrain, Afan, James Hartshorn, uh, GC4 Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Luzanth, Bigokel, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Ramox Sedate, Ruby, Sharp247, Tamriolic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Homeworm, Victor Palmer, Wife of Wars, Wadded, and Zerafir. Uh, and of course, thank you very much to all of the $5 and $2 patrons as well. It is much appreciated because I've been asked this a lot. Uh, I am doing the 2024 Warframe tier list, but... I need to get last year's data from whenever DE releases that, which hopefully happens on the January dev stream. Uh, but that's what's holding that up because, you know, that kind of factors into Warframes getting S ranks or not. But yeah, that's that's what's going on. Uh, and thanks. Thank you, everybody.